Oh, it is you again. You, but... Okay, not even mad about wiping because I can hear the song again, I guess. Maybe that's how this game keeps everything so wholesome. Like even when you wipe, you're like, wow, I get to hear the song again. Very nice. Oh no, it's evil. It's evil. Who is this? Evil potato. Holy crap, this game actually renders what Papa Limo did. Yes! Fly free, my pretty! That's an unhealthy obsession with technology. But it's bitter because I am also aware of the fact that we've come to the end of Heaven's Ward. And I'm just sad to leave this place. I have a lot of fond memories of this place. Very similar to how when I transited from A Realm Reborn to, you know, Ishgard, I was like, oh shit, I left all my friends behind in the tunnel. But with that said, I think this is also a very timely reminder for, you know, the people who are playing Final Fantasy XIV, especially if you're one of the new influx of players, given the recent buzz about the game. Keep in mind, like, this game is really precious. You don't want to zoom through the entire game. You don't want to zoom through the expansion. You don't want to zoom through the MSQs. You want to read every single line. You want to cherish every single cutscene because trust me, before you know it, you'll be like me. You have spent a month in the game, playing this game every day, and, you know, you have kind of, you know, finished the first expansion. Well, folks, here we are. Are you ready? This is the end of the MSQs for Heaven's Ward. And I'm told this will be a good one. So let's get right into it. You want to catch up on the previous episodes? Playlist is to the top right here. All right, here we go. Elfie is calling a meeting to discuss the future of the Sions and what to do next. Kind of strange without Minfilia, but I guess it is what it is. Though not all who were lost could be gathered here today, we may take comfort in the knowledge that those who are not are carrying on the fight. Oh, she's tearing up. So cute. Wonder if you ever get to see Minfilia in the flesh. Come such a long way since he ordered us around in Around Reborn. Well then, Alfie, I for my part shall see to the paperwork and the finances with my characteristic aplomb. Not to mention making new costumes for us. I would ask that you entrust Tupsiamati to me. Clouds gather upon the horizon, and as Master Louisois' disciple, I would keep it close at hand. Hmm, this is a bit strange, right? Because Minfilia entrusted it to me. For every ending, every parting marks a new beginning hmm that's cryptic this is the griffin oh he's in cahoots with elidibus what he's everywhere as for the pawns whom you so pretty they have delivered unto me a gift which i do now present to you wait what the hell oh my god they picked the dragon's eye out of the canyon and yeah, we should have destroyed them huh Elidibus says the eyes are Nidhogg. Many were the candidates considered, but by your deeds you have proven yourself the most deserving. Just when you thought you got rid of the eyes. A man of boundless rage and bottomless despair in whose breast beats a heart which thirsts for vengeance. Only you are fit to wield these eyes for weal and for woe. Okay, will we see Nidhogg version 2.0? Nice sight. The sunrise and the Alagan infrastructure and architecture okay stranger says hmm so it was here all along oh it's him again hello nero indiana jones he says just you wait my pretty you and i are gonna have so much fun we haven't seen him since the crystal tower tataru says you need to be perfectly still for a moment wait who are these people oh they're tailors he's gonna make me new uniforms it's Tataru's army of tailors. Tataru says, All finished. The warriors of light every measurement from heroic head to intrepid toe. Ida says, Elfino summons everyone for a meeting. Though the warriors of darkness no longer pose a threat, Eorzea's many troubles demand no less of our attention. Yep, it's either one of three. It is Primals, Essians, or the Galian Empire. Thus, I propose we elect a successor to Minfilia. And that would be you, wouldn't it? Everyone will vote you. Help! I need some help here! Is it a surprise for us? Or is it really something bad? Yushola! Please, you have to help her! Or a friend of Edith's. But he's planning something new. Something reckless. The Griffin, you say? I've heard the name. But what does the Griffin possibly hope to gain from such an attack? From what I understand, he wants the fires of war to spread to Eorzea. And for that, he needs to control the border with Gridania. 
Uh, because he's also working alongside Elidibus. I suspect the ill tidings from Girabania will be held as a turning point. The beginning to a bloody end. This is so grim. I guess this is narrated from Papa Limo's standpoint. Anyway, we do our job. We tell Sir Imerick, obey Merrick. All right, it's story time. This griffin of theirs is a fool if he thinks he can hold Belsar's wall against the Empire. Well, he has a dragon's eyes though. I do hereby request leave to deploy a defensive force within the borders of Gridania. Gridania welcomes your assistance. In making ready for war, is the Alliance not granting the griffin the very thing he desired? Sounds like there's a bigger plot line with Elidibus here. Might guess something to do with the rejoining. Alfie is saying if only there's some way to reach the griffin, some means to convince him to abandon this reckless course. Papa Limo says it's possible there's a network of tunnels beneath Belsa's wall. Secret passages dug by the resistance to provide a way out of Alamigo. Oh, it's him again, it's Pippin. I haven't seen him forever. Oh, explosion rumbles in the background. Okay, that's not a good sign. Fighting has broken out on top of the wall, a full scale assault. Looks like Griffin has made his move. And he says the attackers, they're wearing Grand Company colors. Wait, wearing our colors. We're being framed, I think. The wall was never Griffin's target, it was bait. We have been goaded into deploying our armies nearby, thus lending weight to its this deception. All oh, right, because we deployed our forces. So people pretending to be us has some credibility. And he says, if those uniforms are convincing enough to deceive my scouts, the Empire will surely think we have launched an offensive. This could mean war. Oh, it's a setup. Worst case scenario, Eorzea will be plunged into chaos. Which is what Elidipus wants, I guess, for purposes of rejoining. Alfie thinks we should still try and reach uh, the Griffin. Oh, this is probably Griffin's double, right? Running alongside um, his supporters, pretending to be us from the Grand Companies. And he says, forward comrades, the time has come to drive the empire from Alamigo. Let this victory be the first step in the liberation of our homelands. I'm guessing all these kind of sets up the next expansion. It should be. All right, we're fighting our way through to the Griffin. Belsa's wall is now accessible. Anyway, while queuing, I was trying to fly past this area. And I thought this was a nice touch. There's an invisible wall. When you bump into it, the game actually shows like a barrier effect being in place. It's a nice touch. I wonder if this is the final dungeon to this expansion. The Black Shroud. I've heard some horror stories about the Black Shroud from 1.0 from those documentaries uh, Chad was making me watch. And apparently there was a mountain back then, so yeah, I hope you like walking. Oh, that guy has no aggro table. He just like does whatever he wants. He just fixates. He's like a mind of his own, basically. It's kind of strange to be fighting, uh, you know, the Empire army and forces again at the end of the expansion. It feels like this is how we ended 2.0 as well. All right, trial by fire. My favorite way to learn bosses. Yeah, those guys don't have a uh, trap table at all. I can't really tank them. I'm just going to let them be. This is a tank buster, so I pop something here. All right, this is the first boss. So far, pretty smooth. Nothing unexpected yet. Oh, the platform is moving. Cool. It's time to pat on that. Ah, uh, we go from platform to platform fighting mobs, I guess. Am I still a tank all three colossus? I guess I am, huh? I guess you just pop defensives here and tank. More mobs. Oh, you can travel to the next area now. I am guessing this is second boss. Hmm, that needed a defensive. Oh, how convenient. I'm in the safe spot. So many ads. I'll just let the group deal with it, huh? Oh, we can just AoE here and pat small mobs here. We've come to the outdoors area of the dungeon. Look at these people pretending to be like Grand Company people. Okay, the final fight. Is that Elidibus? Are you fighting Elidibus? No, it's the Griffin. Okay, sir. You and me. You got a cool cloak though. Whatever that emblem is. What if it's someone we know? That'll be next level, huh? Right, he's unhooding. Oh, it is you again, you, but what who knew? Oh, time to finish this. I guess this is where we finally kill you, huh? We wanted to kill you ever since we rescued General Raupan. It's waiting for the Sprout to make uh, his or her way up here. All right, we go. All right. 
Ew, but I was just commenting the other day. I was like, where's this guy? We need to kill him. And now, we know. I should have guessed, huh? Every time the story reveals something to me, then I think like, oh shit, it's so obvious. It's right under my nose all this well. How'd you like this? I'll turn around, I guess. Yeah. It's okay. Potato, potato know how to do like basic mechanics now. <laughs> okay. Very fitting music I'll to end this guy. Very fitting music. Quite a heavy hit, actually. Very good music. It's like, for al amigo. I guess I pop defensive at the very end. Music so good. The music so good. Wait, we lost two. Oh, my healer died. Oh no. 50% health. I don't think we can do it, right, without a healer. Okay, not even mad about wiping because I can hear the song again, I guess. Maybe this is how this game keeps everything so wholesome. Like even when you wipe, you're like, wow, I get to hear the song again. Very nice. All right, we're pulling. Hopefully, second time's the charm. For Al Amigo! He's a very animated person. All right, we did it. Killed Ilbert, finally. The most annoying character. All right, now you pay. You pay for your sins. All right, do we get some form of closure here? But you cannot stop what I've begun. Behold! A glimpse of things to come! Hey, who's this person? Wait! This guy's new. Hey, who's this guy? Laurentius. Oh, oh no, it's evil! It's evil! Who's this? Evil potato! Wait, I've seen him before. Where did I see him before? Vanguards! Attack! Wait, what are vanguards? Oh! The Magitech Vanguards? Yeah, I don't think oh, you can geez. fight a machine. Yep, it's over. Pretty much. Run for your lives, folks. Oh, there's a many of them. Is this when I show up? Oh, okay, never mind. They paid for their lives. For instigating war, I guess. Yeah, I think running is pretty much futile. Okay, you are. everyone's here. What do we do? This is a massacre! There's nothing we can do. Kill him! <laughs> Let's kill him! Commander. Ill bird. I should have known. Just get rid of him already. Do you not see your countrymen dying? Order the retreat, and we will help your soldiers to safety. Retreat? With the moment of my triumph so close at hand. You truly are a sheltered child, Lever Year. <laughs> they found such a good voice artist that you instinctively just dislike him because of the way he speaks. What are you? Oh, it's the eye. Okay, he's gonna transform into Nidhogg. Nidhogg's eyes. No abyss is too deep for you, I see. But trust me when I say that such power was not meant for mortal hands. And only a man like Estinian can handle it. No mortal should wield these eyes. Then I shall gladly become a demon. Did you hear their cries as victory was snatched away from them? Even with their dying breaths, they cursed the Empire. Never has their desire for vengeance been so raw, so true. A god has no need of faith when summoned by so pure a purpose. Nidho? Summoned? You cannot mean to fight the Empire with a primal. You know full well the danger, the futility of relying on such power. Oh yes, I know their limitations. Which is why I will call upon a deity more terrible than the very black worm of the Calamity itself. Oh, worse than Bahamut. Okay, this should be exciting. What? Here? Now? Stop him! Stop watching! Kill him! Like hell you yep. will! Yep, exactly. Do something. Obviously, he isn't enough. Oh, this guy's insane. We just beat him, beat his ass, and he can hop around. An this should be good. To mark a new beginning! My pain, my longing, you shall have it all! Okay, this is it. Wait, what? <laughs> it's gone insane. Ouch. Will you transform midair? Ouch. Oof. Ouch.
Wait, did he summon it? Okay, Ida looked away. But I'm gonna guess from the dead rises like the primal. Ouch. Okay, this is pretty bloody a sight. Okay. Here we go. Who is it? Wait. Why is Answers playing here? Huh. It's goosebumps, what is this? This light, is it? His death completed the ritual. The primal is taking shape. Not gonna lie, answers is still pretty good to listen in this shape and form. Well, can't we stop it? There must be something we can do! Can I listen to this song to the end and then I'll click through the dialogue? <laughs> There is one thing. Valibo says. What? Hey! Where do you think you're going? Oh, this is when he said that he'll make a decision, right? When the time comes, he'll make his own decision. Is he gonna sacrifice himself? Master Louis Soir briefly contained Bahamut by means of a potent spell of sealing. I will now attempt to do the same. Oh, right. B but that's impossible! We would need hours to collect the necessary ether, if not days. Yes, Tutsi Mati, does it help? Ah, uh, Alfino, though I concede it may not always be apparent, I was ever your grandsire's finest pupil. Ha <laughs> ha. Tutsi Mati, of course! The staff still holds enormous power, broken or not. Don't uh. you dare, Papalimo! I know how that spell works. Oh, you have to sacrifice your own life force, I bet. Oh no, we're gonna lose him. Yep, I think we're gonna lose him. It is time to leave. Oh no, okay. Starting to answer... Starting to, starting to understand why they use answers as a song. Quite right. Quickly now, off you go. The further away, the better. Yep, he's sacrificing no. himself. If you're staying, then so am I. No, Ida. There is a path only you can walk, and it must not end here. Not like this. Mm, he really cares for Ida, his companion. Take her. Please, you have to take her. Oh, he's made up his mind. Oh no, self-sacrifice. Oh. What? No! Damn it, Thancred! Put me down! Thancred! Oh no. This Guess is one losing battle you one. cannot fight. Away with you! Go! Ah, <sighs> we're losing another Sion. Can I stay? I'm gonna stay. Stay at Papa Limo's side. Nope, not going anywhere. Let's perish together. Oh, okay. I guess Hilda! my decision was I think futile. He means now! All right, we're getting the hell out of there. No, Papa Limo. He's gonna sacrifice. Also, oh, that's what he meant. I bid thee farewell again, my dear Ida. Hmm. Now, let us see how good a student I truly was. Doing the... The teachings of Louis so proud here.
What are they summoning though? I'm really curious. Does he succeed though? That's the question. Uh, this was the same graphical effects from the Around Reborn cinematic. Did it work? Oh, it worked. Oh wow, what a sequence. But we lost another one. How many Sions must we lose? This game, man, they want to wipe out all my friends. Ida is understandably upset. She wanted to stay with him to the very end. Well, me too, I got knocked away. Thancred says, you could see it in his eyes, Ida. He knew what he was doing and what had to be done. Master Luisa wore that same look right before the end. That is true. Uh, she's obviously heartbroken. Okay, this story just took a turn for a really exciting road ahead. Oh wow, I didn't see that. Yeah, a fellow viewer just pointed out to me that. Holy crap, this game actually renders what Papa Limo did. In the game itself. They updated the texture to reflect that. That's pretty insane. Urienje says, Thus did the pupil follow in the footsteps of his master even unto the grave. Elfie says, I've yet been able to explain how Ilbert came to possess Nidhox's eyes. Elfie says, in the depths of the Sea of Clouds, a perpetual storm of water and wind expected ether rages. No mortal could endure such conditions. The shoulder suspects is the work of an Essian. Elfie says, we must begin preparations to face Ilbert's cursed creation. What time we have was purchased at too dear a price for us to squander it. Oh, so sealing it is not the end of it. This a chance we have to fight it. What? Okay, now I'm genuinely curious what the hell did he summon. Right, I'm guessing we're quite near the end now. This will probably end as a cliffhanger, right? As per what happened in A Realm Reborn 2.5? Who's this dude? Wait, what? It's a Kung Fu master! I think. A word if you would, good sir. This place. <laughs> it is within the realm of Eorzea. I don't know why I love I think the voice artist is pretty good. Uh, this here is Vesper Bay, Thanalan's door to the ocean, as some folk like to call it. Hmm. Am I to understand from your answer that I have indeed arrived in Eorzea? <laughs> His expression is super queer. Hey? Yes, you're in Eorzea. <laughs> this dialogue is pretty golden. Ah, a plain response at last, and the one I wanted at that. My journey was not without its hardships, and I would sooner travel by land than put to sea again. <laughs> you do not believe that so small a bark could bear me across the ocean? Such timid little sailors. I had but to set my course and set my jaw till I made port. What a man, so strong. <laughs> He's a quirky dude. Though, it would perhaps have been wise to lay down my oars a moment to sup on more than the spray of brine water. By the trembling of my limbs, I sense a brief repast may be in order. Nay, I will not hearken to the feeble grumblings of an empty belly. Duty comes before all. So strong. Okay. <laughs> good, good, man. Are you all right? Eat something, my man. Rianjay looks on. All right, what do we do here? Potato much. I must burn a lot of calories every day walking like that. Archon Yishtola has confirmed the presence of a primal entity. Who is it? But the vessel was destroyed when it drew near. The Empire appears to have made no subsequent attempts to reach the object. The soldiers who witnessed the incident spoke of a lance of light issuing from within the cocoon. Of an entire warship being reduced to smoking ruin in the space of a moment. A lance of light. Veterans of Cartano, meanwhile, likened the destruction to that wrought by the fiery wrath of Bahamut. Yep, danger is very real here. We must destroy it now, lest it break free. How though? Is this truly so complex a puzzle? Oh, it's Nero. Indiana Jones is here to save Pleasure us. Pleasure to see you too, Garland. Although you already know what I'm about to propose, old friend. I guess it's something to do with the Empire. 
and the only force in existence which might conceivably contend with such a foe is the very creation which captured the Elder Primal in the first place. I speak, of course, of Omega. You know, as odd as Nero is, he's actually pretty funny but guy. sentiment aside, have you a better solution? Mm, we don't really have a choice, right? I don't like it, but then it doesn't look like we have much choice. Exactly. Sid, I appoint you leader of the expedition. Science, I would ask that you assign some few of your number to escort Master Garland. What about the grand companies? What would they do? Alright, as weird as this scene is, at least we have a course of action. Alright, we're taking the airship from here. You guys remember when we first arrived in Gridania via airship? That was like so long ago. Time flies when you are truly having fun. Alright, we are back in Modona. Is this like the, one of the first of many many cutscenes that will blow my mind? Okay, I don't think so because the warning for please sit through many cutscenes has not appeared yet. I confess I would have expected an order of self-proclaimed warrior scholars to surround themselves with the fruits of man's enlightenment. And yet there's not so much as a single piece of Magitek in sight. Oh, I'll have you know that the Rising Stones is home to the very latest in Magitek innovation. Wait, we do? Wedge calls it the Mark 14 Thermocoil Boil Master, and it's the finest kettle I've ever had the pleasure to own. Sure, okay. Kettle. Oh, strange dude is here with Urienje. This is the Rising Stones, domicile of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I enter at the invitation of one Lord Urienje. <laughs> they found a very good voice artist for this guy. <laughs> I spy you there, Shadow Walker. You always were a hard one to find. I didn't know why another. Hey, Giri, do you know this man? They're both ninjas, I guess. Is he going for a hunt? In search of you, you Giri. For days and nights did I row across the angry sea. I made port in good spirits, only for my own flesh to betray me over the trifling matter of an empty belly. Collapsed in the street like an unfed stray I was, until Lord Urionje came to my aid. And he's now the funniest guy in the game now. Over a most welcome meal, we spoke of the plight of Doma, and I learned of our displaced countrymen's work to resettle this blighted land. T'was blind fortune that I was able to locate you so swiftly. <laughs> He's so dramatic. <laughs> but now we must make ready to depart. Our master languishes in dire peril, and Doma calls her daughter home. Wait, what? Their homeland's in trouble. Hmm, how very noble of you. Now, in the name of honor, kinship, and, ah, oh, yes, practicality, might I suggest we get this expedition underway? Nero's a really funny the guy, Empire. actually. You, Giddy, you draw steel against the curse of Gollumold? Then why did you not say so? My blade is oath-bound to fall upon the ranks of the Imperials wheresoever they march. Lead on, Shadow Walker. And may the enemy tremble at our coming. I wonder if the voice artist is as hilarious in other languages. <laughs> He's so odd. Tataru is like, can I speak to you for a moment? Oh, she finished my costume. She made a traveling outfit for me. She says you can try it on now if you like. I wonder why when Lala's... Oh, so cute. It's like... Custom made potato uniform. And uh, yes, the both eyes similar to Ophis. You know what's so funny when, when uh, Lala Fels is surprised they do like the heads up thing? It's actually quite funny. I mean, it's quite nice, but I think I prefer my armor. Alright, is this the very end? I guess this is the very end. Since it says, once there, however, we had to be best on our guard, given that Eli Royal was still active when Omega was discovered, we can be sure that the Empire has long been aware of its existence. And if Nero deemed it the obvious solution to the threat posed by this new primal, it is not impossible that Gallimal would do the same. We need to reactivate Omega, I guess? This is a really strange party. With Nero and this big dude. I don't know what's his name, I can't remember his name, but... Big dude. He is one funny guy. I think he's the funniest guy besides Godbird. Now where was that? Ah. How intelligent. How convenient. You've been here before. Who are these people? I chased down a suspect airship, and who should I find but the traitor, Sid Garland. What about Nero? He's a traitor too. Why is he putting on makeup? Wait, he's about to show what he can do. I am 
Shun Gorsetsu! Samurai of Doma! You will rue your choice of opponent this day! <laughs> I can't take him seriously. Alright. Samurai versus big ass technology sword or something. Look upon a samurai of Doma! <laughs> He's super flashy in battle as well. I like the electric guitar riff here. It's all over now. Pretty good. Alright, we did it. More reinforcements. Wait, sorry, I gotta take this phone call in the middle of battle. Hang on. Nero's like, I can lend you a toy here. Wait, is that Nero? <laughs> oh. I guess we can pilot that. But they don't smile. Oh, cool. I get to abuse this. They say you're a god now. Wait, he's running away. This is the control panel. Temporal stasis disengaged. All systems operational. Garland? All clear on this side. It's waking up. It's almost like they're best friends. Assuming its mission is successful, our only option at that point will be to re-engage its stasis system and put it back to sleep. Hmm, what's if this close up to either All though? Right. Step aside, Sid. Is this the thing I need to press? Right, I guess we get to see elegant technology in action here. <gasps> yes! Fly free, my pretty! Show us what you can do! That's an unhealthy obsession with technology. Okay, cinematic time. I wonder what's inside though. Okay, here we go. What? It's another dragon. It's almost like the same image as Dalamu in Bahab. Is this Omega? Oh yeah, I think so. How's it planning to capture it though? Okay, we get to see the primal. Oh, it's another dragon. Okay, it's a 10D tidal wave that is summoned. Okay, such devastation. Oh, okay. Apparently, technology is OP. But the elegant technology is like so next level. This is like all on autopilot. What the hell? I mean, the primal is no slouch either. It's like so resistant. Did it just land a hit? It's gonna be a beam versus beam moment. A dragon versus technology. It's pretty intense, huh? Okay. 
That was intense. And quite the explosion too. Holy shit, what's the beam of light? Wait, they're still alive, both of them. Huh? Omega has stopped transmitting. But that shouldn't be. I, I didn't engage the stasis system. Got beaten. And what does this signify? I have little understanding of these contrivances. He <laughs> provides us comedic relief, that's great. The launch went exactly to plan, but all signals emanating from Omega have ceased. This may indicate any number of things, but we will need to join the Scions out in the field if we are to ascertain which one. Seems like such a strange way to leave things. Wait, why did a muck disappear? Wait, why did a muck disappear? It was bound to his ether, you see. And if the connection is broken... Then Papa Limo is gone, but why did her tattoo fade? This is confusing. Alfie says, words can you express how glad I am to see you all unharmed? When Omega came hurtling towards the cocoon, everything dissolved into chaos. Is it like a double KO? I'm not so sure though. Uh, everyone seems to be in a celebratory mood here. Merwip says, The cocoon hatched even as Omega arrived, and from its midst rose a great dragon. The pair duly set about each other in the skies above. The primals might defy belief. It seems the very heavens would be rent asunder by the force of its blows. And it wielded such magics as I've never seen, and I hope to never see it again. Kani Sena says, While most among us could think only of Bahamut when looking amongst the primals' form, the Domans were heard to whisper the name Shinryu. It would appear that Bing resembles a creature of Far Eastern legend and we have found it convenient to refer to it as such. This Shinryu's fate and indeed that of Omega is yet unknown. Oh, it seems like we are safe for now. <laughs> I am no stranger to the works of Alag, but even I was unprepared for the machine's furiosity. It beckoned belief. Yeah, it's so next level. I knew the spell Papalimo meant to cast would drain away his life force. I knew that it would only buy us a little time. No, I feel so sorry for her. They're like partners in crime. Oh wait, she took off a mask? Wait, who is she? Ida, there is no need to explain. I am confused. But there is! I can't hide in Papalimo's little shadow anymore, and I shouldn't hide behind my sister's mask. The sister's mask? Did I guess that years right? Ago, on the day the Empire marched into Alamigo, I was still just a child, not even five summers old. My father had been one of the leaders of the revolution. He had fought to overthrow the mad king, Theodoric. Hmm. And my sister had fought alongside him. But she was strong and kind, and always knew what to do. But when the Garleans came, everything changed. My father went to war against them too. And I never saw him again. After that, I remember a lot of running. My sister dragged me for malms and malms until we came to the city of Charlian. It was where she met Master Louis Soir. He introduced her to the Circle of Knowing. And she eventually became an Archon. And where's your sister now? Is that not why you took up her mask and her name? Or did you simply mean to continue what she had started? Oh, she passed on. And she inherited her identity. What? Why? You've known all along, haven't you? Oh, what? We all recognized you at once. It was Papalimo who persuaded us to maintain the charade. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm sorry for lying to you. My real name is Lys. When Papalimo brought me Ida's mask, it was meant as a keepsake, but... I decided I wanted to be his new partner, to keep alive all the good that she had done. Oh, okay. But it was never what he wanted for me. He wanted me to walk my own path, and those were his final words to me. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, it's good that she found her own two feet. It's kind of cool that Papa Limo persuaded everyone to, work, to go along, though, with the act. War is upon us once more. The battle continues, 
and our steel is needed. Come, Shadow Walker. We leave for the east. For Doma. Elfie says uh, Papa Limo's loss is the one act that made her determination to move forward and assume her own identity. Oh, what? That was the ending. Is it the ending? I think credits are about to roll. Yup, credits roll here. Oh, what a journey. I kind of expected more cutscenes towards the end, but that was quite a, a strange ending. It doesn't allude too much about what the next expansion. I'm sorry, I always have to shut up when this song comes up. Listening to songs at credits scenes is quickly becoming one of my favorite things to do. Dragon song is so apt. Oh, we've come such a long way in this expansion. Oh, at least we finally have some conclusion for where Minfilia is. Every time this song plays, I think about that scene where we pry the two eyes from Estinians' armor. That was hands down, folks, the best moment of this expansion and like one of the best moments I've ever encountered in a video game. Or dare I say it's the best moment I have encountered in a video game because until this day, no other scene has moved me to the point of tears. And there's so much good that has come out of this expansion, like I think your sales is, you know, character development and her eventual death, which is a very touching scene that sacrifice. And um your sales is uh, someone that I really, 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 really liked from this expansion. And it's so unfortunate that we can't cross into the next expansion with her. I think Elfie definitely grew a lot as a character. Um, you remember I once made a video about how I didn't really like Alfie at the start. Enjoy this song. quite there because of the climax of the song man. That, that song always gets me. Torture Font and Yasil, my two favorite characters. Like, I uh, I think this, this expansion, you know, is really defined by their moments of sacrifice and uh, they'll be sorely missed. Very sorely missed. Oh, this scene though. And they knew one another like all the way back in the trenches, right? Of war. Goosebumps. Why must you 
this when Estina left the hospital early. With a bouquet of flowers to pay his final respects to Yasil. What a man. What a man. And this climax of the song. You know, I look back at Heaven's Ward and I think back to the moment when Yesel put a hand on Alfie's hand to try and help remove the eyes. And then again, the vocals went quiet and the music went quiet. And then Dragon Song's music intro cues and I knew that, shit, this is the moment. This is the moment where it would define this expansion. Um, I'm definitely going to miss the Ishgard theme song. It's... Um, you know, the first song that greeted us when we stepped into this like snowy city. And man, so many good memories of all these characters that I met in Ishgard. Aymeric is probably one, one of the characters that I've grown to like a lot. Um, you know, a man of principle. And I remember the moment where he kneeled down um, in front of Midgard Sommer. That was something that has left a very deep impression in my mind. Heaven's Ward is a masterpiece, folks. It's, it's really is. It deserves, it deserves like all the applaud um, and praise that everyone has been telling me about. I remember when I finished A Realm Reborn, I was like, A Realm Reborn, it's really good. I can't imagine an expansion better than this. And then people were like, ah, just just you wait, wait till you see Heaven's Ward. And I must say, at the end of Heaven's Ward, this is a true, true piece of amazing work. And again, no video game that made me cry um, or shed tears to the extent that you know Heaven's World could. And I thought I, I thought I was able to escape that gauntlet when uh, Hotchafon died or oh, your yeah, sale died. I was like holding back tears. But the uh, the end of Dragons, the Dragon Song War really got me good in 3.3, and I will always remember that scene till my dying breath. I think it's very very uh deeply etched in my mind as an example of like what video games should truly be about like being able to bring you into the into the game and forget about your worldly troubles and your woes all right more cutscenes i guess Pippin says, Quick much, the Imperials will soon come to their senses and we must be ready to face their retribution. Balban says, I'll take back our homeland, Ilbert, for the both of us. Oh, here we go. More Empire cutscenes. I guess you'll see this guy a lot in the next expansion, huh? I like how he has like random lion like ornaments and statues. Imperial officer says, Lord Viceroy, our scout have confirmed the preliminary reports. Belsa's war has fallen to the Eorzean Alliance. The hunt for Omega and the unknown primal continues though both eludes us. Viceroy says, Unknown, my spies tell me Dolmans call it Shinryu and that it proved a match for Omega. Yes, the coming days promise to be most interesting, most interesting. Oh, who is this? Oh wait, this is him under the mask. That sinister smile. At the far edge of fate, the road begins anew. The heroes look to eastern skies and behold their crimson hue. A dawn of liberation, a gathering storm of blood. Woof, goosebumps. Next expansion, I guess. And so folks, I think Heaven's War coming to the end of the MSQs, I can only do it justice by finishing this very last MSQ episode. Um, in Zenith. There are so many things I want to convey about this expansion and I'll try and do it in chronological order. I think when we first started Heaven's Ward, I was still kind of suffering from, you know, that, that heartbreak of losing the Sions and the tunnel and then, you know, dragging our feet to Ishgard and I remember, you know, Hotchafon kind of picking up um, Elfie with some hot beverages saying that he needs to move forward and you know grudgingly we move forward like we we started getting involved 
um, in the, the affairs of Ishgard. And that kind of slowly took your mind away from, you know, losing the Sions and whatnot. And I think the journey with, you know, the Ishgardian folks really was, you know, at its peak when we came to Zenith. Remember, you know, meeting Yasil in A Realm Reborn and it wasn't like, you know, the best. I think we started with Yasil being kind of a villain in the story and then she kind of turned to be somebody really likable and she had a very soft side to her again i wouldn't go into the moogle story but you guys know i have a soft spot for that moment where she said that she found the moogles to be really fluffy and you know she has a human heart as well and i think her sacrifice on um our way to azizla and then making sure like our airship was able to pass um, that was honestly one of the defining moments of heaven's what to me and it encapsulates what you know, the development team is able to do so well in character development, which is you never know when a character you like or dislike is going to be either killed off or becoming one of your favorites or, or going to betray you. I think that's one of the brilliance of the storytelling in, in this game. And I think her tragic story is not only a function of, you know, her, her sacrifice, but it was also the imagery of her, you know, riding on her Svelga and, you know, the the backstory between Shiva and the dragon. And then that was something that was also captured in the theme song of this expansion, right? In the lyrics of the song. So your sales story is like, you know, a very core part of the Heaven's Ward experience. And I think that's what made this, ex this entire expansion so memorable. And then on the other side, you have Estinian, which is someone who was kind of like the opposite of Yasil. Like they have very differing views in terms of, you know, the dragon versus um, humans kind of conflict. And Estinian was more like coming from a place of vengeance for his family. But what really touched me was at the end of the day, Estinian was someone that still respected Yasil a lot. He does, he's a man of very few words, doesn't say a lot. But when I found that bouquet of flowers for Yasil, like, there was a moment where you know that Estina is such a classy guy, like, he sneaked out of the hospital with the bouquet of flowers and he wanted to pay his last respects uh, to Yasil, because I think deep down in his heart he knows that, you know, Yasil is a warrior like himself and, you know, she died for a noble cause and without Yasil, maybe they wouldn't have been able to vanquish Nidhogg. But of course, folks, the best moment in this entire expansion has to be the moment where you're riding on Hurst Valga and returning back to Ishgard to back up the city and fighting Nidhogg in that in the battle. Again, a big shout out to the community for making me do that on min eye level because I get to, you know, really experience the entire fight for its full length and the epicness of the fight that was very well choreographed. And I remember like I was sitting there forming the group and just listening to Dragon Song and I just didn't want to queue. And again, if you haven't seen the episode, I'll link it to the top right here. But that moment has to go down as one of the best moments in, in video games history, for me at least. And just when you thought you, you can't top that experience anymore, they hit you with that um, cutscene where you had to pry the two dragon's eye away from Estinian. And I've explained this before, like why that scene is so particularly memorable is because Estinian himself actually called for you to kill him. And I think that was a moment that you thought that, okay, the story could go south again. We could lose yet another one. We have lost Hotchafon, we have lost Yasil, and we could lose Estinian again. And then Elfie made the call to say, we must try and we try to pry the eye. And again, the best part was when everything went silent and they played the intro to the Dragon Song music and you see Yasil's hand appear and the camera pans up to Yasil and then it pans to Hotchafon. That scene just you know, shattered my heart or it, it really captured my um, my my imagination there. And I think lastly, what can we say about Hotchafon? I think he was such a such a remarkable character, right? He was always cheerful, always so enthusiastic. And yes, in the Japanese dialogue, I know he's very thirsty, but that was like the comedic relief that he brings uh, to the table. And some of my Chinese fans, uh, the folks who play in China, um, I've read some of their comments and apparently Hotchafon is you know, his dialogues are pretty thirsty in, in Mandarin as well. But one of the things that, you know, is great about that guy is, you know, he, he might be 
very overly enthusiastic sometimes, but his heart is in the right place. And I think his sacrifice for us blocking that, that lance with his shield, that was such a great moment. You know, the other highlights of the, the entire experience, obviously, I think is fighting Tordan that, you know, that fight was really amazing. Uh, fighting all the knights, the tribute, uh, to Final Fantasy VII and whatnot, like that was honestly a great moment. Um, a great soundtrack to match. Also, you know, the community's uh, insistence of me doing like Alexander and, you know, seeing the Void Arc series of raids on myself, that was pretty, pretty impressive. I think the final fight um, for, for Diablos was really awesome in the Alliance raid. The music in the first phase is just, you know, on another level. And so that's that. I don't really know what to say. Like, there's a lot of emotions within me that I find very, very hard to express. It's a, it's a kind of a bittersweet feeling. It's a bittersweet feeling because it's, it's sweet because you've gone through like, I think what a, what is a wonderfully crafted um, storyline for Heaven's Ward that definitely tops a Realm Reborn hands down, even though I thought it wasn't possible, but it, it did. And those stories that I just recap, like, you know, those are memories that I'll keep very dear to my heart. But it's bitter because I am also aware of the fact that we've come to the end of Heaven's Ward. And I'm just sad to leave this place. I have a lot of fond memories of this place. Very similar to how when I transited from A Realm Reborn to, you know, Ishgard, I was like, oh shit, I've left all my friends behind in the tunnel. And there's a bit of that feeling going into the next expansion. But with that said, I think this is also a very timely reminder for you know, the people who are playing Final Fantasy XIV, especially if you're one of the new influx of players, given the recent buzz about the game, keep in mind, like, this game is really precious. You don't want to zoom through the entire game. You don't want to zoom through the expansion. You don't want to zoom through the MSQs. You want to read every single line. You want to cherish every single cutscene because trust me, before you know it, you'll be like me. You have spent a month in the game, playing this game every day, and, you know, you have kind of you know, finish the first expansion and, you know, just know that there's, there's limited amounts of, you know, storylines out there. You want to cherish every single moment of it. Take it slow and take in every moment and, and how apt the weather has basically changed here to something that is of clearer skies. Um, but I think that's pretty much it from me for Heaven's Ward. I would finish uh, the Warring Triads and maybe some side content before moving on to the next expansion obviously you know we'll be doing the trailer reaction for the next expansion um, there's been a lot of questions being opened by this expansion as well especially i think after 3.3 where you start learning about the warriors of darkness and you start learning about you know in 3.5 the summoning of that primal um and, and the fate of its battle with omega and it does sound like we'll be you know getting quite a bit of like other megan story um, and the empire storylines in the next expansion but with that said, all good things must come to an end. I've learned this the painful way in Final Fantasy XIV. And maybe for, you know, one of the last few times, this is, you know, Potato-chan, Malankun and I signing off from um, Zenith, one of, I think, the best zones in uh, Heaven's Ward. I hope you guys enjoyed the entire journey of Heaven's Ward alongside us. Again, a big, big, big shout out to my community out there who has made this journey ever so memorable. I will always remember you surprising me uh, before the Atiro chemical facility when I was climbing, you know, the slopes um, in um, Azizla. And thanks again for making sure that I go all my way out to do, you know, the Alexander raid and the Alliance raid. And those were really like spectacles to behold. And I appreciate you, you know, giving like guidance on that journey so that's that and for the viewers out there thank you so much again for supporting my series um, of episodes and to my patreon subscribers a big thank you uh, for your contribution to, to this channel and for now we will rest our very feet thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it do subscribe to the channel it will help me immensely as a content creator have a great day folks and i'll see you soon 